All right, we're still talking about the nature of solutions. Basically, what type of solutions do we get? One solution, no solutions, or infinitely many solutions. And we had just finished up in our last video writing these things down, right? Different, different slopes, automatically, you got to solve it. There's an answer. There is an x and y value that make it true. If you get same slope, you got two choices here, and it's going to depend on the y-intercepts. But I kind of want to um, add something on to our infinitely many solutions, okay? Kind of a time saver here. The ratios are the same, okay? The ratios of the system are the same, the coefficients in standard form. So I'm just going to write ratios are the same, and then I'll do an example. And it should look familiar because we've done this before. A prime over A equals B prime over B, which equals C prime over C. So the reason I want to point that out is let's look at this one here. This is really similar to one we've done before. Okay, it says determine the nature of the solutions. This looks like, you know, what your homework's going to say. If it has a solution, find it. Okay, so what I mean by this is I want to look at this equation here. And I want to refer it to the ratios are the same. So obviously I'm telling you it's infinitely many. But it's really important to kind of look at the whole thing. Before jumping in and saying I've got to solve for y in this one, take a look. This is in standard form. And if we look at the coefficients of our x and of our y, you should see that there's a relationship here. If I take this bottom one here and I multiply it by 3, I get 3x plus 3 times 1y is 3y equals 3 times negative 7 is a negative 21. Do you see how it's the exact same thing as this one? So if you think back to when we were like we were writing things in standard form and then we're like, okay, give me another equation that equals that one. And we would just have to multiply A, B, and C by the same number. Same thing here, okay? So we talk about our ratios being the same here. What this means is, and it doesn't matter if you go one over three or three over one, you get three over one plus three over one equal, not plus, sorry, equals, negative 21 over negative 7 because negative divided by negative is a positive and if you divide both of them by 7 you get 3 over 1 okay if you had taken both of these and you had solved them for y you would get the same slope and the same y intercept so you wouldn't have gotten it wrong. You would have just done more work. So that's why I say st take a step back. And if you're like, well, wait, before I do that, do I have my A, B, and C in standard form there? Do they have the same ratio, like if I multiply by the same number? If the answer is yes, like it is here, don't do all that work. There's infinitely many solutions, okay? And that also means that we don't have to worry about solving it. All right, let's look at another example. This one here, um, this one is in slope-intercept form. This isn't, so it's kind of helpful um, to maybe take this right here and put it in slope intercept form y equals mx plus b because it's not hard to do right we're close we just have to divide everything by three so y equals one third times x plus two thirds okay um i'm going to solve this by graphing right here but i I just want to show you that there's one solution. It's not the best way to solve it by graphing because, well, let's start with this one. Let's go keep, change, change, okay? My y-intercept is negative 1. My slope is 3 over 2, rise over run. So rise 3, 1, 2, 3, run 2. Rise 3, run 2, okay? Then I can get a line, and I just want to show you that this does have one solution. We're not going to be super concerned with what that solution is yet. All right, now this one here, it's two-thirds. All right, so we can break these up into two-thirds. Like there's one-third, two-third, one. One and two-thirds, two and two-thirds, two. You know, we can 
break these up in boxes into thirds. So if my y-intercept is two thirds, I can put a thing here. Now my rise is one. I got to go one whole box up. So I got to come up here to one and two thirds and then go over three. One, two, three. Okay, so it's not exact. Um, but you're going to see that if I graph both the lines, they do have an intersection point. Where that intersection point is, well, it looks at it's, you know, just like maybe one and a third. I don't know. Pretty close. Okay. But there is one solution, which we saw because they had different slopes. This last one, I want to introduce you to something a little bit new. It's called substitution, solving using substitution. You've seen it in our power standards, and we'll spend more time on it later. But substitution basically says this. I can solve both of these for y, but they're both solved for x. Well, if this right here equals x and this right here equals x, then don't they have to equal each other? This equals x. This equals x. They both have to equal each other. I think it's called the transitive property. So what we can do is we can actually set them equal to each other. Notice instead of saying minus 4, I did plus a negative 4. Now, this really isn't doing the nature of the solution. Solving for y, you'd have to do this. But I want to just introduce you to this new method. Don't stress too much about it. Um, but I just want you to have seen it for when we get into it later on. All right, so now we have... An equation with the same with y on both sides. So I'm going to get rid of 9y. This is calling back what we've done before. I'm going to subtract 9y from each side. <clears throat> Excuse me, I have 3y plus a negative 4 equals 7. Now we have a two step equation. I'm solving for y. I got to get rid of the negative 4. So I'm going to add 4 to both sides. I have 3y that cancels out equals 7 plus 4, which is 11. And then I divide both sides by 3. We get y equals 11 thirds. All right, with substitution. So we have graphing. Um, we're going to have something called linear combination. And then we have the substitution here. What we do is we take this y and we plug it in. And you can plug it into either one of these. Um, I will just use this first one here, which is x equals 12y minus 4. I'm going to take this 11 thirds here and I want to drop it in for y. So x is going to equal 12, and I'm going to write it as 12 over 1, times 11 over 3, minus 4. Don't get intimidated by this stuff. You know how to do this stuff. You just got to write it down. I can cross-reduce. 11 and 1 only have a common factor of 1, but 12 and 3 have a common factor of 3. 3 goes into itself one time. It goes into 12 four times, and we get x equals 4 times 11 over 1, which don't mean anything. So that's 44 minus 4, so x equals 40. Okay, so... We have one solution here. I was able to find it. 40 and 11 over 3, whatever that is. I think it's a repeating decimal. Okay. Just want to introduce you to that. But again, our focus is on the types of solutions. One more real quick. Write a system of equations with 4, negative 5 as its solution. As before. You've seen me do a problem like this before. Start with this x value and this y value. Okay. 4 negative 5. And then do something to them. 2 times 4 plus 3 times a negative 5. Figure out what it equals. Like grab a calculator. Type in 2, maybe. 2 times 4 plus 3 times negative 5. And I get negative 7. What I can do there then, guys, is just replace this with x and y. This is 2 times x plus 3 times y equals negative 7. And then do that again over down here. But this time, pick different things. Um, 5 times negative 4 plus 6 times negative 5. What does that equal? Calculator. 5 times 4 plus 6 times negative 5, it's negative 10. Okay, so then this is x, this is y. Write it as 5 times x plus 6 times y equals negative 10. Here is your system, okay? So start with your answers and work backwards. 
Okay, so hopefully I didn't confuse you too much. I wanted to expose you to a couple of things there. Again, our focus is on the nature of solutions. One solution, different slopes. If you have the same slope, it's either no solutions or infinitely many. Um, and that's going to depend on that y-intercept. They different y-intercepts, no solution, same y-intercepts, infinitely many.